Hello everyone. Uh, this time around I want to talk a little bit about the craze, I guess, on the uh, internet trying to push everything to be SSL. Now, I should probably explain what this SSL business is uh, anyway uh, before I get to, uh, to uh, the whole craze here and why it's popped up. So uh, basically, uh, when you go and look at a web page or, or uh, similar on the uh, internet with your uh, web browser, which might be uh, Microsoft's browser, what are they calling it these days, Edge or something? Uh, or maybe Apple's or Firefox or uh, some random browser or whatever, it has to go and talk to a server somewhere on the internet and get the, uh, the web page that you want to view. That may involve dozens or hundreds or sometimes thousands of requests against servers before it can show you the whole thing. Uh, but that's a different topic and I've talked about how that sort of thing can slow down page loads and so on. Uh, but it has to talk to the server in some way. Now, classically, that's just it, it opens up a connection, like it looks up an IP address from the DNS, uh, you know, basically gets the phone number. It calls up the server on the well known uh, extension or port number uh, for web page delivery, and it gets, it makes a request, gets a page back, and shows it to you. That generally works pretty well. Uh, the thing is, if somebody is monkeying with the network between you and that server, they can intercept the communication and show you any web page they want. The other thing is, if they're a monkey, if they've somehow messed with the DNS, uh, where uh, uh, where you're getting the uh, access to the DNS, they could give you. A fake answer and direct direct your browser to a server of their choice and then serve up whatever they want. So uh, you basically you've got the man in the middle that's the guy in the network or you've got uh, DNS uh, uh, poisoning attacks or what have you. And the idea is that for a high value site or uh, something that's, that's sensitive, that has sensitive information like logins and so on, you don't want to send that over a clear connection, clear channel connection uh, like uh, a, a classic uh, web page load which uses the HTTP protocol or hypertext transport protocol. Uh, because uh, that can be uh, even if it's not being interfered with, somebody who can look at the packets as they're going by can see what's going in both directions. Now, for a long time, it wasn't a big risk that uh, some random uh, person was going to be able to look at the packets coming from your computer going to the server unless they controlled parts of the internet backbone, your local network, or the server's local network. And that just had to do with the way the networks function. But with the advent of Wi-Fi, be you know ubiquitous Wi-Fi and things like that, it became a lot easier to snoop on end networks, uh, the, uh, the the end user, the consumer network, not the one the servers on so much, but the uh, the uh, end user network. So that means that somebody uh, in a van uh, sitting on the street in front of your house has a really good chance of being able to see all the traffic that's going on your network, even if you've put a password on your network. Because it takes something with, the, with uh, relatively cheap hardware, you can crack a Wi-Fi network uh, uh, password in about three seconds. So it's not a... Uh, a significant uh, barrier for the people that really want to see into your network. Of course, it's still a relatively small risk uh, compared to things like key loggers on your actual machine that are actually going to grab your password that way uh, from malware and so on. Uh, but it's still a risk. Uh, uh, so, uh, 
you know, there, there is some, some real concern why you should be uh, encrypting the traffic going to sites that do sensitive things. And that's where SSL or the Secure Sockets layer came in. Uh, and its later iterations, which uh, turned into uh, what the TLS protocol, I can't remember what TLS stands for, but uh, that, that protocol is a means of uh, encrypting the communication end-to-end. -end. And that's actually a pretty good idea uh, for anything doing something sensitive. So that's why you want your e-commerce sites to be having HTTPS on their URLs and, and, and that sort of thing. The URL is the thing in the location bar in the browser, if you're not in the know on that sort of thing. Uh, and that's assuming you have a browser that even shows you the location bar these days. But uh, there are two problems you have to solve. Like you've got the man in the middle attack. You can encrypt your... Uh, connection all you want the uh, the man in the middle can also encrypt his connection so uh, if he's intercepting your connection and all you're doing is encrypting then you can then he can have a, an encrypted session with you and then pass all your stuff on to uh, in an encrypted session to your intended target uh, that means nobody can sniff nobody but the guy in the middle can sniff the uh, information going back and forth so you've protected yourself from the Wi-Fi sniffer guy in the van outside your house, but you haven't protected yourself from somebody pretending to be the server that you're trying to connect to. And you haven't protected yourself from the guy that's managed to redirect your connection to a server he controls through some other means. So encryption itself isn't enough. You need authentication. Uh, so you need something that tells you that the server you're connecting to is the one you intended to connect to. And that's, uh, and that's where the other part of the SSL thing comes in. You can do uh, SSL without certificates. You don't have to have certificates to authenticate anybody. But usually, there's going to be at least a server-side certificate. And that certificate is based, is based on public key cryptography, which is a fancy talk for lots of math. And uh, that uh, uh, the, basically the server presents you a public key that's been signed by a, uh, a trusted uh, third party or a, cert a certificate authority. And your uh, web browser gets that back, and uh, it verifies the uh, that the you know the signatures right and everything else lines up, and then it says, "Okay, this is good," or it complains because something doesn't match, and you get that scary security warning. So. Uh, I probably made a hash of the of how the uh, certificates work, but it's it's because it's a fairly involved underlying process uh, involving lots of math. But uh, basically, what you need to know is that a server has a certificate that's signed by somebody who uh, is deemed to be trustworthy, and that. Uh, it allows your browser to know that it can trust the identity of that remote server and also that the c connection is encrypted. Now, uh, SSL uh, and TLS allow the client to provide a certificate as well so that uh, both parties can authenticate each other. Uh, now, you don't even necessarily, to be secure, need to have that third-party certification uh, going on. Uh, if uh, both parties trust a known, a, a shared uh, authority, or you have nailed down your trust to one particular certificate, which can be done as well. So once you've authenticated that you're talking to the right server, you can have your, your software make a note that this certificate is right for that server, and if it changes, complain. Uh, but... Doing it that way has a very high burden for the consumer, the average person using stuff, and they don't have a way to verify that they're talking to the right server. So there, there's no way to do that sensibly. 
and that's why we have this the cert certificate authorities um, and every web browser has a list of trusted authorities that it, it has and it uses those to uh, to verify that the uh, remote site is valid. Now there's a whole bunch of other things associated with the SSL and TLS protocols that uh, are often not f fully implemented or not done because they have severe performance uh, uh, problems or, well, lots of reasons really. Uh, but anyway, the basic idea is that if you're talking to an SSL enabled site with the HTTPS protocol, then you can be reasonably certain if you're not getting a browser warning that you're talking to the site that you intend to be talking to. That's assuming that all of the certificate authorities in the browser's trust store or certificate list or authority list or whatever you want to call it are trustworthy and uh, that is actually dubious, but uh, it's, uh, it's hard to... Uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to come up with a better solution, really, than what we're, we're currently doing. Uh, it's it's difficult to it's difficult to wrap your head around exactly how to make this sort of thing work in a way that the average user who is not technically savvy doesn't understand certificates and so on uh, how they can actually manage it. Uh, the average person. They can barely manage the physical keys to their house. So dealing with uh, complicated mathematical constructs, certificates and webs of trust and all of that stuff is just not going to happen. At least not anytime soon until people start growing up dealing with this stuff. And then we might see a shift. But it's going to take a long time. Okay, so... It's not controversial that, say, an e-commerce site like Amazon should have an SSL certificate. That's That hasn't been controversial for decades. If people have been, okay, yeah, that makes perfect sense. We'll do that. Uh, it's safer. We're, we're happy doing that. People have been doing that for decades, and it's it's worked pretty well. Lately, there's been a lot of rumbling about government surveillance and terrorists surveilling things and bad guys looking at things. And that's got a lot of paranoia going. And now there's pushes to encrypt absolutely everything, uh, to use HTTPS on every site, including grandma's recipe list. Or uh, Joe Smith's blog about nothing. Um, these things, the idea is, if you encrypt everything, then there's no way to tell uh, important chatter that's relevant to whoever's snooping from unimportant chatter. So they have to expend the resources to crack everything, not just the uh, streams that are encrypted to by people who are deliberately trying to hide something. Now there's something to that. But it's gone way too far. So SSL is complicated to implement. And over the past few years, there's been some massive security holes in common implementations of, of the protocol. And that's, uh, that's raised some questions about whether this is necessarily a good idea for absolutely every site. But aside from that, does it matter if somebody is, is snooping on uh, grandma's recipe site? It's just presenting some pages to people. It, does it need to be encrypted? No. Does it need to be authenticated? No. It's not necessary. And so this notion that web browsers are going to start throwing up warnings if you connect to a site that isn't HTTPS enabled at some point in the future is, well, not helpful. Uh, especially up until uh, earlier this year, when the only way to get a certificate was to pay a substantial amount of money on a regular basis to one of these certificate authorities, until Let's Encrypt came along and started offering free certificates. And even then, the bar is fairly high for getting that part working, if you're not a server operator. Uh, 
Um, at my day job, we do have it functioning uh, because it makes our lives easier. But uh, this notion that everything has to be encrypted or the entire web is broken is that notion itself is broken. Uh, still, with free certificates being available, and now that you can have multiple sites on the single IP address and all sorts of stuff like that, basically it's up to feature parity with plain basic HTTP uh, from a server operator standpoint. It starts to become practical to do this sort of thing, but it still comes at a performance penalty because SSL, because it's extra processing, it involves math, it involves the encryption processes, is going to necessarily take more processing power. And that means it's going to be more expensive for server operators to run. And, and, that's, and, and for that trivial site that's doing nothing but showing a static brochure, what's it matter? And this is what I have a problem with is the idea that we need to force everything into that, um, that category. Now, with the ever-growing number of sites that, are, that need a login to do anything on them, I can understand the, growing, the push to work those sites using the uh, encryption. I can certainly understand that. Uh, but there's still a lot of sites that don't. They don't collect user information. They don't collect anything sensitive. They don't um, require logins. And you can't even get a login for their site. Those sites don't need the encryption. Uh, it, there's nothing to protect. Uh, and you can't protect the user from having their computer compromised or their network compromised. So... Uh, requiring every website to be encrypted is just stupid. Now, of course, I'm pretty sure that the ship has sailed and we're going in the direction where everything's going to be SSL. Uh, and that's going to lead to uh, a different compromise vector and that's going to obviously be uh, some bad actor acquires a uh, certificate, you know, like one of the trust uh, anchors that the browsers have, and starts uh, uh, issuing uh, bad certificates, and uh, that, and then they can hide man-in-the-middle attacks and everything else. And if you think there aren't bad actors that can do that, take a look at the Great Firewall of China and things like that. Uh, where you've got these authoritarian regimes that wish to control everything, they'll just issue an edict to a certificate authority under their authority and say, thou shalt do this. And the authority is going to do that because the guys with the guns say to. And, that's, and because we're running fast in the direction of having this trust anchor issue, uh, uh, being the, this being the linchpin of the entire uh, World Wide Web, uh, that's going to be the next major attack vector that gets real attention. It's not a new type of attack, don't get me wrong. It's been done before, and it will be done again. Uh, there have been certificate authorities that have gone rogue, and some of them are actually trusted in your browser still. Uh, and it's a politically difficult problem because the first web browser to remove the certificate uh, for the rogue authority uh, that, uh, that has any number of legitimate certificates issued as well as the rogue ones, that first browser to pull that certificate is going to lose market share to a browser that hasn't. Uh, because people want to go to their websites. They don't care if the people certifying the website are corrupt or broken or something. They, they just want to go and look at their, uh, their kitty porn site or whatever. And no, I'm not advocating kitty porn. Uh, but let's be honest, there's people out there that that's what they care about. They don't care about the security of the internet, right? Uh, whether it's kitty porn or tentacle porn or 
uh, recipe sites or the Library of Congress. It doesn't matter what site they want to go to. They just want to go to their site. And if getting to the site requires that they trust, uh, their browser trusts some rogue certificate authority, they don't care. They just want it to work. And this is actually the reason why you're not going to get the general public to manage a web of trust for certificates and so on and encryption properly. And that makes encryption and so on basically worthless uh, to the general public. So they don't, they, don't, uh, they don't know what it is. They don't know why they want it. Therefore, they don't want it. And it also takes work to do right. So they're not going to do that work. Hell, people in the industry who understand the stuff find it's way too much work to deal with. So if we find it's too much work, then obviously it's not ready for prime time. Anyway, uh, I think that's probably enough of a ramble on that, but basically the idea is that uh, in the near future, uh, essentially the whole web is going to be on HTTPS or SSL or TLS or whatever the acronym of the week is. I think it's a stupid idea to push in that direction at all. If it's a good idea, it would have happened on its own anyway, probably. It might have taken a bit longer, but uh, I think it's a bad idea to just push everything indiscriminately in that direction. But it, that seems to be the thing these days, so it's going to happen, no doubt. Uh, but you know what? It probably doesn't make things any worse than they are now. It just means that you've got more processing overhead to do nothing. That's essentially what we've got. So there you have it. Uh, HTTPS everywhere, stupid idea, but it's probably not going to break anything. Well, that's enough for now. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.